Hi everyone. So in this video, I will talk about the magnitude of the electric field parallel to the dipole axis and the magnitude of the electric field perpendicular to the dipole axis. Now I have a dipole here. This is the positive charge of the dipole. That's the negative charge of the dipole. And remember when we talk about dipoles, those two charges need to be of the same magnitude. So if this is of plus 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs, this one needs to be minus 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs. So they have to be of the same magnitude, of course, opposite sign. Now, uh, this is the equation for the electric field of the dipole parallel to the dipole axis. Now, one thing that I, I want to point out this is just an approximation okay i wrote it as if they were equal they are not exactly equal they are only that's only an approximation this expression is only an approximation to the magnet of the electric field and this is only an approximation to that and this approximation is valid if the magnitude of r is much greater than the separation of the dipole s now the separation of the dipole is this distance okay so from here to here this would be s that distance is s so for these two expressions to be valid i need my observation location needs to be at a distance much greater uh, from the dipole much greater than the separation of f uh, s of the dipole so from here to here, this will be okay, this distance over here. This is the magnitude of R. And this needs to be much greater than S. Now, uh, pay attention, uh, I've drawn the magnet of R to be from the center of the dipole, okay, to where the observation location is, okay, that's the magnet of R. Now, S, the separation between the dipole charges, that's from the positive charge to the negative charge. Now, for these two uh, approximations to be good approximations, the magnet of R needs to be much greater than S. Now, what is the cutoff? If it is a factor of three, um, if this is three times s, would that be a good approximation? There is no clear cutoff. The important thing to remember is that the greater r is from s, the better the approximation is. Now, if you have an r that is a um, hundred times s, I would say that's a good approximation. If R is of the same order of magnitude as S, say S is um, 10 centimeters, if you give me an R that's uh, 15 centimeters or 20 centimeters, I would, I would not use these approximations. I would like R to be um, several times whatever S is, many times whatever S is. But there is no clear cutoff. It's not black and white. Um, it will have to be, uh, the greater R is essentially, the better these two approximate formulas become. Now, in the problems that you will have, it will be clear whether R is much greater than S or not. Okay, it, it, There will not be any doubt about that. If you have an R that's 50 times S, 100 times S, or even larger, then you're fine. Go ahead and use these two. The other thing to keep in mind is that these two um, approximations are valid only parallel to the dipole axis and perpendicular to the dipole axis nowhere else. All right. Now, what did I want to say here? If, if I say, let's say I have this R and I make it equal to D. So from here to here to the center of the dipole, it's a distance D. And then I do, I draw the same distance parallel, uh, perpendicular to the dipole axis. So here I have another observation location and 
this distance so this distance is also d okay let's see what we get so let's call this point a let's call this point b the electric field at a say from the dipole okay from the dipole at a the strength of that electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 times the dipole moment divided by d cubed and the electric field from the dipole to point b is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught the magnitude of the dipole moment p divided by d cubed now let's do the following what i'm gonna do now i'll divide those two equalities and what happens this is a constant which is the same constant as that now because i've kept the two distances the same this cancels with that and it's the same dipole so this p cancels with that p and my result magnitude of the dipole at A over the magnitude of the dipole at B these so everything else cancelled out the only thing that I have is the factor of 2 so it's gonna be 2 over 1 now what this is telling me is that the strength of the electric field at A is two times the strength of the electric field at B. For Note that this is for the same distance D in both cases. And the reason for that is that there is an extra factor of two here that you have in the expression for the electric field on the dipole axis. And that two, that factor of two is not included, is not here in the expression for the magnitude of the electric field perpendicular to the dipole axis. So, if you are the same distance from the dipole on the dipole axis, you're going to see an electric field that is twice as strong as the one that you will see here. Now, how will that show up? Let me let's visualize, let's draw some arrows to see what we mean. We know uh, we have an idea for the pattern of the electric field uh, from the dipole. We know that the electric field at A is going to point away. So this will be the electric field from the dipole at location A. Now, when I draw the electric field here at B, I will have to make it half of that length. The arrow will need to have half of the length that I have here. So it's going to be roughly, okay, let's say it's something like this. So this will be now the electric field from the dipole at location B okay I can do the same thing if I choose if I choose um, okay, let's do so from here okay roughly there if I call that location C then I'll draw an electric field arrow that is also half of that length. So that will indicate that the strength of the electric field here from the dipole, this strength is half of the strength of the electric field from the dipole here. Now the same thing okay let's go back let's do point d so from here 
for the same distance but on this side of the uh, of the dipole so this is gonna be location D I know that the electric field will point towards the dipole so this will be the electric field from the dipole at location D okay these two arrows have twice the length than the arrows at C and B and that's because of the extra factor of 2 that we have in this approximation.